Have you considered the other control options available to you when flying a helicopter? There's quite a few. Mouse and keyboard, joystick, gamepad. None of them let you fly faster or slower or give you access to extra powers or anything like that, but they do all have their own strengths and their own weaknesses, and I'm going to be talking you through all of those advantages and disadvantages in this show. So let's get learning. Greetings, my name is The Adipose and this is Learning to Fly a Helicopter Part 2 and in this episode I'm going to be talking exclusively about all the different ways you could choose to fly this helicopter because there are quite a few different control methods and I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of each one. Now the first and most obvious method is going to be your mouse and keyboard. The first advantage of this is you already own it. You probably are, you're using it already for your infantry um, soldiering and so on and so forth. So you've already got one. It doesn't going to cost you anything. It also is because of that reason is going to be very very easy to transition between the two because right now my hands are on mouse and keyboard to run around and my hands are on mouse and keyboard and my hands are on mouse and keyboard and my hands are on mouse and keyboard. You know, so I, I'm instantly going between flying a helicopter and not and, I, and I'm I'm able to be ready to fight or fly or or, or, or whatever. So there's no pause in between me being ready to get into the copter or fight again afterwards. Because there will be times when you need to dive out of a helicopter and quickly shoot someone, or dive out of a helicopter and stick the parachute on, or even, you know, sprint towards a vehicle that someone's left unguarded, jump straight in and, fl and be able to fly straight away. Um, which is one of the benefits of the mouse and keyboard, that you are in the right place. So that's quite a big pro to using the, the mouse and keys. Another pro is that actually a lot of the top players use this control method. It is a popular control method, um, so you will not be alone using this method. In fact, some of the best players do use it. And they are, a lot of players use it for jets as well. So if you're looking to fly helicopters and jets, perhaps this is a control method for you to get used to. But on the negative side, mouse and keyboard probably does have a steeper learning curve. Um, and the main reason for this is because your pitch and roll are controlled with the mouse. And it is harder to control the pitch and roll with the mouse because you've got to be... First of all, the, the movements are a bit trickier, but when you want to go to one side or the other, you might find yourself having to kind of pick up the mouse and put it down again and pick up the mouse and move it across to kind of keep it going across. And it's harder. And the other thing you can't do with the mouse is put consistent pressure on one side or the other. So if I had a joypad or a, sorry, a joystick or a, or a, or a gamepad, I can just hold left and keep holding left. If I want to continue to hold left on the, on the mouse, I've got to move left and then pick up the mouse and move it again and move left again. And it gets it's harder for me to kind of get that consistent pressure with the keyboard and mouse. And recovering from a crash is one of the things that actually requires consistent uh, pressure on the mouse. Because when you get down to quite low health, so your, your helicopter can get quite hard to control. And you'll be needing desperately trying to push yourself in certain directions or push yourself back in certain directions. And, and a, a joystick or a, or a gamepad are going to be easier to do that. Um, the other possible issue we have with the keyboard and mouse is that, especially when coming to the uh, the turn left and the turn right, which I'm doing with my keyboard, and I know I haven't talked about this in the video series yet, but with the keyboard here, I've only really got left and right, and it's, it's full left, full right, like I've got no little kind of... Um, uh, like I can't move slightly left or slightly right. I've only got kind of full acceleration each way. And the same goes for the throttle with W and S. It's either on or it's off. Um, I can't kind of just hold it at a kind of mid little throttle. Um, if, I, if I want to do that, I kind of need to keep tapping it like I am now, and you can kind of see the vibration going on in the arrow. So, so I have perhaps slightly less um, control. Um, by not being able to do these um, small angles, as, as I show you, me failing to use the uh, the roller. But there is actually a positive side to that, um, and especially when you're flying a, a jet, it, it means that it's actually going to be very, very quick for you to go from the left to the right. Because now I'm going left, now I'm going right, now I'm going left, now I'm pressing right, now I'm going left, now I'm pressing right. You know, it's it's almost instant. I don't need to move like the joystick all the way across or the gamepad all the way across. Um, so it, 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 you can change directions quickly, or at least change the controls. Um, quickly. So, strengths and weaknesses there, have a little think about it. What about mouse and keyboard? I mean, it, 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 and also the other negative thing about mouse and keyboard is it doesn't really feel like you're flying a helicopter, um, you know, because the joystick obviously really does kind of feel like, hey, I'm flying a, a vehicle now. Um, so it does it has quite an unnatural feel to it, but there are a lot of positives as well. 
Now, what about um, keyboard and keyboard, which I know sounds like a bizarre combination, but what some people have chosen to do, especially with jets actually, is to not use the mouse uh, when they uh, fly, but to actually map some of the other controls to the arrow keys. So they'll use uh, W, A, S and D on the left, and the arrow keys on the right. And so that actually eliminates the problem of not being able to put consistent pressure when you're kind of rolling or, um, or, or pitching, because if you're using keys, then you can actually put consistent pressure, and it's a lot easier to kind of get out of, of crashes. Um, another advantage of keys and keys, of course, you own it already, your hands are very close to being in place, not exactly in the right place, very very close um, it um, it does mean you can put consistent pressure on the pitching like I said um, but perhaps aiming can be a bit tricky because you've got you've got these kind of jerk you'll have these kind of more, slightly more jerky movements when it comes to pitching rather than the consistency or the subtlety you might actually have with a mouse um, or a joystick but keys and keys is an unusual combination but try it I mean, maybe you, you might find you like it um, it's actually slightly more popular in jets than it is in, cho in, in choppers but that doesn't mean you can't give it give it a go and it doesn't mean it won't work for you now um, the perhaps the nerds favorite and I would count myself among a ner among the nerds is going to be the flight joystick um, biggest con of the joystick of course is you may not own one and it will cost you money to get one but they're called flight joysticks for a reason because this is probably the most realistic um, you will get in terms of actually kind of feeling like you know perhaps how you would in real life flying a helicopter now it won't feel exactly the same because in a helicopter you have pedals and things so it won't replicate all of it unless you want to buy a very expensive joystick um, it will the, the way the joystick works is basically the stick will control your roll and pitch by moving it around and then most of them you can twist the stick and that will give you your kind of your left and right movement and the the feel of that is really good and and by that it kind of feels natural you know you'll pick up the, you'll get the joystick you'll you'll put it in your hand and you'll actually find being able to fly the helicopter comes a lot quicker and more natural to you than it would with mouse and keyboard and if you are the kind of player perhaps like I have been where you kind of use that mouse and keyboard and you actually really struggle with flying maybe try the joystick or the gamepad um, if you have one available because you it does it the learning curve is a lot easier on on those um, systems um, the other thing that you could consider with using a joystick is that it has very very subtle degrees of movement so if you want to be able to just move left a little bit like that very very slowly and then suddenly go a lot faster the joystick will be able to do that if you want to be able to just kind of um, you put a little bit of throttle on if you look at my arrow there on the, on, the, on the side very easy to do with the joystick and then you can quickly slam it off or slam it back on very very quickly the joystick has those little subtleties of movement that the keyboard um, just doesn't cons for the joystick like I said it can be pretty expensive um, you will have to take your hands off the mouse and keyboard to get to it so you've got slow transitions joysticks tend to be pretty big so it'll take up space on your desk so if you have got a pretty packed desk then the joystick may not be for you now the last one we've got to look at is the controller um, the controller is going to be like a PS3 pad or an Xbox pad now one pro of this be if you've got a PlayStation or an Xbox you already own one an Xbox you can just plug straight into Windows and it should work um, a PS3 pad you'll need to do a little bit more work and um, there's a piece of software um, called Motion Enjoy that you'll need to download um, it's free um, and if you'd like me to put a tutorial together on that I'm more than happy to but there's plenty available across the web but basically you trick your PC into thinking that the PS3 pad is an Xbox pad and then it works exactly the same and the advantages of a controller is it does have a good feel it not uh, not the amazing feel that a joystick has but it's a good feel it's better than the uh, the keyboard in terms of the kind of realism feeling um, it's got a good um, it's got a good left to right speed and, and roll I mean, you can do it, you can move very quickly with the controller and because because on the on the analog sticks you've also got these little subtleties of movements as well so the controller can do the, the very, a very quick turn and it can also do a very slow turn as well so the controller has those benefits of the joystick one negative that I didn't discuss with the joystick and this is what some of the top players have brought up as the problem is that the if suppose I'm on the joystick and I've, I've got it on full left in terms of the roll and then I want to put it in full right in terms of the roll actually moving that joystick across will take half a second, a quarter of a second, you know, because it's, it's quite a large physical object, the joystick. Have a look all, uh, for, for some pictures on YouTube, on um, Google if you're not sure. But actually moving it all the way across will take a little bit of time. Whereas if you're using the keyboard, or perhaps the controller, you can just whip it across instantly. 
um, you know, in, in, in microseconds. And although a quarter of a second, eighth of a second doesn't seem like a lot of time, if you're in a fast-paced dogfight, and it does make a difference, I'm sure you'll know from running around an infantry, you know, often the person that gets the first shot off will win, even if that first shot is off only a few milliseconds in advance. Um, so one possible advantage of the gamepad over the joystick is that it has a good feel, but also has quicker response times, because the, the, the analog sticks are a lot quicker to whip across than perhaps. Perhaps a, um, a joystick is. Gamepad is also smaller than a joystick, won't take up um, as much of your desk, and maybe be tucked in a drawer when you're not using it, or uh, kind of tucked next to the screen. Um, possible cons of the get of the of the gamepad? Well, you might not own one. If you don't own a PlayStation or an Xbox, then you're not going to have one available available for you to use. Um, it can actually be a little bit uncomfortable to use a controller with a computer desk because it's all your desk is probably set up for you to kind of you to have your hands on the desk, and when you get a controller, you might not be able to kind of put your hands on the desk quite as easily because the mouse and keyboard is in the way, so you might have to sit back a bit. That might be no problem for you, or it might be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and the aiming can be a bit dodgy, uh, a little bit with the controller, because um, if you've ever um, tried to play a first-person shooter on a on the PlayStation or the Xbox, you'll know that the aiming is a lot tougher than it is using a mouse. So you might find your accuracy suffers a little bit when you're trying to um, fire the rockets off. But helicopters are quite kind of unwieldy anyway. You're not going to be getting incredible accuracy with them, even if you are um, using um, the mouse and keyboard. So in conclusion, there is no conclusion. There is no right answer and no wrong answer, but there may well be a right or wrong answer for you personally. So if you have the option to try out some different control methods, then I strongly recommend that you do. In my clan Team Europe, I have some. Where there are some players that use mouse and keyboard very, very successfully. Some that use joysticks. I personally use the controller. Um, so you know there is not a right answer, but do uh, do try out the different options available. And it's important that you try them out before you commit yourself to really learning how to fly the helicopter, because it will be a lot harder to switch control methods um, down the line once you've kind of started to develop um, some advanced skills in the copter. In part three we're going to get back into the cockpit and get learning these advanced uh, kind of control methods and get you really kind of flying around and um, uh, getting down low and in between the buildings and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I will see you in part three where hopefully you will have chosen your control method and be ready to fly. Please give the video a like if you found it useful, and subscribe if, when you, if you would like to find out when the next videos are available. Take care. Goodbye.